Hello, it's John here with another 852 tutorial. In this tutorial, we are going to be looking at actually triggering our previously made particle effects. Let's just jump straight in. So previously, we have made we made the hearts, the warp hole, the leaves falling, and then we even did the falling ash effect last time. What we want to do now is make these a bit more dynamic, a bit more interesting. And particularly, we are going to be focusing on our first one, the hearts raising out the fountain. So, at the time I probably mentioned that my idea behind this was either a hit or some kind of fountain based like refillable health. So when you stand in here, you replenish your health. And we would like to indicate this a bit better. Now particle effects, particularly the like ash one, something like that, be quite intensive and we don't want it to be running at all the time. So we're gonna just spend a couple of minutes looking at how we can actually trigger this. So the first thing I want to do is just real quickly, I all I've done here is I just created a quick fountain and threw like um, a water material, static mesh on top of it, just to create the illusion of a fountain. So we are going to need to trigger this. And the keyword right there is trigger. So if we go, in to our left hand side, go to basic and grab a trigger box. We're just going to drag and drop that right into our fountain. And let's expand it out. Make it nice and big. So these are going to be the bounds where when our player steps in here, it is going to trigger the creation of the hearts spawning. So when we step in these bounds, the effect will be triggered. Awesome, so we've dropped down our trigger effects. Because I have set these up, it's not like a character or anything like that, it's not got its own blueprints. We're gonna do this in the world blueprints, the level blueprints, sorry. So click on blueprints and open level blueprints. And we've not created anything so far, so let's do that now. Make sure your trigger box is selected. Cool. With your trigger box selected, let's go over here and we are going to right click and we'll. I've got my flow selected. Come on, trigger box. Okay, let's just do this the easy way. There we go. Trigger box is now selected. Easy way. And let's go into our blueprint editor and right click. You've seen we now have this create reference for trigger box. We don't actually want to create a reference though. We're going to be adding an event. So go into events, down to collision, and on actor begin overlap. On actor begin overlap. It's red because it's an event. This is something that's going to happen straight away. It's a starting point. And we are going to drag a little node of this. And at this point, we want to spawn our particle effect. So we're going to spawn our emitter. Spawn our emitter at location. Let me just move these out a little bit more, give us a bit more room. Cool. We are spawning at location. What we need to do now is tell it which we would like to spawn. So we're going to click in here and I'm going to spawn my heart float party. My heart float party. At the moment though we're not telling it any sort of location where to spawn. We could get our X, Y, and Z value but we're not going to. What we're going to do is click on our fountain. Again with that selected. Go back into here. Right click and we are going to create reference for our fountain. Drag this off and we're going to get location. Um, get enter location and drag that to the location and let's give it a test. I'll just move this out of the way for now. We'll uh, delete the other one as well. So that's not very. Awesome, it's working. It's if we 
So I'm clicking here. Uh, I don't you can't see it if I move this out of the way, maybe you can. You see how on the right hand side it, the trigger was working, so there's something wrong with something else. So let's find out what well first of all let's quickly remove this sort of particle effect. We don't need this anymore. Delete and let's go into our heart's particle effect. And find out what's going on. So it's working, but I think the problem is it's spawning right in the center and we've got this central pipe part of our fountain. So what we need to do is, just for sake of test, let's add a location, initial location. And this will give us a bit more spread anyway. And let's just go to top view. And find out how big this is. About 260. Cool. So we're going to go um, max 130, 130, like 2, minus 130, minus 130, 0. 0 is fine. And what we'll do as well is we'll increase the sponge so we're making it a bit more likely that we're going to see some. Set that to 8. And hit save. Let's move this out of the way. Go back to our primary view. And go. Yes! There we go. It looks like the hearts are spawning out. I think some might just spawn out. I'm going to shrink the numbers a bit and increase the up velocity, maybe increase the size as well a bit too. What are you doing? There we go. So I want to change my initial location numbers, maybe 120, 120, minus 120, minus 120. What else did I say I was going to change? The, I think I might change the size just a little bit. 30, 30, 30. Get more. Mm, Spawns okay. Maybe knock it up to 10. And give it potentially a little bit more lifetime and a little bit more up velocity. Give it that range. And that should hopefully be good. So, now spawning, and then we'll get closer. And spawning! Cool! Now we know if we step into this fountain, our health will recover. Excellent! One thing, yeah, that should be pretty good. One thing that to note though is that we've not got a way to stop this. So in our blueprints, it's basically going to spawn forever. If we don't want it to spawn forever, we could go down to required and find, go down to duration. And we could either set like a time in here, or we could set a loop. If it's set to zero, it means it's going to loop forever. Why don't we say, oops, no, we'll just say loop 12 times. That should give the audience enough time to see it. Well, if we were doing this in practice during the game, we could set this up on a blueprint. We could set it up on a blueprint and be able to kill it from the blueprint. Cool. Awesome. And we're actually going to set my loop points back down to zero, just for sake of test. But there you go. We have just triggered our heart spawning and we could do the same thing for this one as well because this one would be quite intensive the effects going on in there our fire and our ash falling so we could trigger those quite easily with a bigger bounding box and yeah hopefully you found that useful and you can apply that to your particle effects so thank you for watching